You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening. You'll notice there's no guest here. So we're just going to do this, um, well, sort of opinions. You know, usually I'm moderating, so I try to be balanced, interrogating, questioning. You know, I'll cite none other than Carol Marine, queen of queen or king of the news for many years, um, public policy, that politics, working for NBC, working for TTW, working for a long time at Sun Times, where she gave many opinions. Everybody knew Carol was quite liberal, and yet she would be the balanced moderator at WTTW. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you some opinions, certainly a lot of analysis of the mayor's race in the city of Chicago, which is a long way, seven months away, February 26th the election, but time goes fast, and it's got a very large field, so there's a lot to talk about. And the governor's race, which is coming up sooner on November 6th, so we're taping this on August 2nd, just about um, three months for that election. So that's what we're covering covering the mayor's race, we're covering the governor's race. We may touch on some of the more interesting uh, races that we hope to be covering, state rep and state senate races in the Chicago metro area. They do have an interest in addition to the governor's election. So let's start, let's start with the governor's race, uh, excuse me, with the mayor's race and Mayor Chicago. It's a floating field, but it appears that I think one way to say it is that there are currently uh, currently 10 candidates in the field. I'll add one because I'm almost sure there'll be one that covers an important base that's not covered now. So ethnic base. Let's start with the top. So I don't know if Ram has declared he's a candidate, but everybody knows he will be, well, most know. Most are pretty comfortable and confident he will run, despite the many problems he has. But there's one problem he doesn't have, and that's raising money. It's estimated he'll have $30 million. He's got about $8 million so far. So that can do a lot of things. I mean, let's take a step back. We'll, we won't discuss all of the candidates. We'll discuss at least of what ones I'll call the top five in terms of name recognition. The others could catch fire. They could do it. We may, we'll touch on them as well. But Rom deserves a lot of attention because he has been the mayor for seven years and he is easily the favorite to win this. Well, I'd say he's the favorite, but I don't know. People aren't so sure. Uh, I'll say he's the favorite. Uh, he's certainly the favorite to get into a runoff. If nobody gets more than 50% in the February 26th election for mayor, February 26, 2019, then it goes to a runoff between the top two. So most people are saying Rom won't get the 50% he needs to win outright in February 26, but he will get into the runoff, uh, that, and that runoff is held on April 2nd, and then, then you don't know what happens. And people are less sure about who's likely to get into the runoff with Rom. So if you take a step back, you know, Rom is, what, 58 or so now. He's been kind of, I think he thought he was being groomed to be president of the United States. That was his goal. I think Mayor was just a stepping stone, but he always knew it was all about the money. Because he started out when he was a young guy doing, I don't know, passing petitions, doing some work for a they probably called it in those days, in the late 80s, a liberal group as opposed to a progressive group. But quickly, quickly Rahm realized he had a knack for raising money. And he became Mayor Richard M. Daly's, one of his major fundraisers. And Rahm told me he never understood why people thought, you know, it was so admirable that he could raise money and that he was so courageous. <laughs> it's Rahm. Ron said, uh, look, when you call people up for money, 
what kind of courage does it take? What are they going to do, cut your phone wire? I mean, the worst they can say is no, right? And I mean, you know, he had these techniques. If he'd call you up and, you know, he was looking for 25000 really, these days that's what they do. They start, there are always ways of getting around our so-called campaign contribution limits in the federal area of twenty five, twenty seven hundred now. I don't know what it is in the city. It seems to the limits are off because Willie Wilson gave a hundred thousand dollars, so I think there are no limits. They're pretty high anyway. But in any case, so he's looking for twenty five thousand. Somebody says, I'll write you a check for five thousand and around and say, I could take that, but what when that gets out that you only gave five thousand dollars? People are going to think you're in such financial trouble. I don't want that to happen to you. I won't let that. You've got to write a check for 25000 You see how easy it is? Okay. So, you know, that's Rom. He's groomed. He was a daily funder. He was raising money for Bill Clinton. Uh, he then became a senior advisor to Bill Clinton in the 90s. He then took a little break to raise for himself, earn about $18, $20 million dollars working for a few years for an investment banking firm here in the loop and, you know, handled a major deal, which was the merger of ComEd and Exelon way back, okay, when there was a ComEd, merged into Exelon. Well, actually, it was the merger of ComEd with PPL, Pennsylvania Power and Light, and somehow out of that whole thing came Exelon, okay, or so. But anyway, so he made $20 million in a few years, and that gave him some freedom, okay? So he could run for Congress, not worry where his next paycheck was coming from, and when. And then he could, in 2006 or so, turn, turn the Congress blue, make a Democratic majority, which made him a hero. And then, when Obama was elected, and he had worked with and for Obama, he becomes White House Chief of Staff. And then when Daly decides he's stepping down, he lets Rom know a little early, so Rom gets a jump on the 2011 election, and he raises $12 million, and the rest is history. And he has a blip we'll get to in 2014 with Laquan McDonald, but he kind of got past that. He kind of, some would say, kind of covered it up until after the election, so he got reelected, this time with $24 million. And then that brings us to the current. That brings us to August 2nd, 2018. And so Ram now is the leader. He's been here for seven years. He's looking for his second term. He has, he has this problem with Laquan McDonald. What's the problem with Laquan McDonald? Well, everybody knows it was a while ago now. It seems like just yesterday. October 2014, we're now in July 20, August 2018, so we're almost four years away, but no trial. Laquan McDonald is this kid, 16 years old, African American. He's probably on drugs of some type, but he, the call comes in, this guy's, I don't know, scratching cars. And so police keep rolling up where this is, they take a look, there's nothing terribly dangerous, they're sitting around. Nobody's got a taser. They want to go up to him and if he gives them any trouble, just tase him, but nobody's got a taser. So three years into the Rahm Emanuel mayoral reign, they don't have enough tasers for the police force. Well, they got 11,000 policemen down from maybe 13,000. And uh, so anyway, there are like eight policemen there, there are 10, there are 12, 14. And, you know, and they keep looking for a guy with a taser. Nobody seems to, everybody, please keep coming, but they can't find a taser. Which, you know, could be, you say, Rom's fault. I mean, he put a police chief there, and we'll get, have, we hope to have Gary McCarthy here, who's also running for mayor and was Rom's police chief in a few weeks. And he'll talk about what's happening, I hope, in the first few years. Homicides were going down, I believe, under Gary McCarthy. Uh, 2011, 2012, 2013. But what's this taser thing? Was it really that important? Get to ask Gary. Um, so finally, Jason Van Dyke rolls up, and he takes a look at the situation, sizes it up in about five seconds, 
runs out, sees Laquan McDonald. Laquan McDonald's walking away. There's a video of this. Walking away from him, apparently. But he plugs him 16 times in six seconds. And so he's dead. I mean, some would say executed. Some would say murdered. And why did Jason Van Dyke do that? I don't know. Obviously, he had some issues. And uh, should he have been holding a gun? Should he have been on the police horse? Should there be a way of which we monitor police? Did he have problems before? Could we have known this could have happened? And if that's true, if any of those things are true, would that be Rahm Manuel's fault? Because he handpicked Gary McCarthy, I think. He certainly had a say in making him his police chief. And is it Gary McCarthy's fault? We'll have Gary here. I'm glad he's coming because I don't know whose fault it is. I know, but I think it's somebody's fault that Jason Van Dyke is there and nobody found out he'd be a problem. Seems to me, you know, somebody has to be at fault. Okay, so uh, there's that problem, and then there's the other problem. There's a video, which Rom certainly knew about in 2014, probably soon after this killing, murder, whatever we want to call it. Gary McCarthy knew about it. A law department knew about it. I think the law department took the position that there's an investigation going on so they couldn't release it. Uh, people from the public started asking for it, filing Freedom of Information Act, so forth. The law department was fighting it, and, uh, and they fought it successfully. Uh, they didn't tell people what the video showed, so the February runoff, February election occurs. Rom gets by that, <coughs> into that. That's in uh, 2015. And then he's in a runoff. Still the video is not released. And he wins that. And then the video comes up. Cover up? Well, you know, we'd like Rom to come here and we'll... We haven't pushed too hard, but we'll push soon. See if we have him. Uh, so, you know, we'd like him to, you know, show up and tell his side. So he's got that problem. He's got, and that's the Laquan McDonald problem. He's got homicides erupting in 2016, spiking very high, coming back down in 2017. He's got that problem. He's got the Chicago Tribune writing about sexual assaults occurring in CPS and being reported, credible complaints occurring every other week. Uh, for the last seven years, actually going back ten years, but seven years under Rahm Emanuel as mayor, every other week a credible, credible complaint of sexual rape or assault or harassment by faculty and staff and volunteers, adults, on students. And they have a separate problem that came out recently by the Tribune uh, reporting of special ed kids who are supposed to be monitored, not put in these dangerous situations. One special ed kid who's thought to be and known to be dangerous sexually harasses, assaults another special ed kid. And again, this is supposed to be monitored by CPS and not happen. So who's to blame? Who's to blame? CPS? I mean, this has been going on for 10 years, Rom says 10 years, but seven years under him. There's a Chicago school board. There's a Chicago, supposed to pick the superintendent, but everybody knows that Forrest Claypool was put there from, I don't know, from uh, 2014 to 2017, maybe 2018. So Claypool was handpicked to be there. Before that, it was Barbara Bird Bennett who went off to prison. So Rahm, who handpicks these people, nominally the board does, but he puts the people on the board, and the board says what he does what he wants that's another problem so these are all rom's problems but he's got 30 million dollars so he's still the favorite and gary mccarthy probably number two in the polls um gary mccarthy number two in in the polls because um He's 59, polling recently that uh, Lori Lightfoot did, shows him at 
He's got a base. He's a police chief. He was involved. He was involved in the police department in New York for a long time before he came here. He was then the police chief in uh, New Jersey and Newark. Newark did quite well, brought here, and he's known. He's got name recognition. He's got a base. He's got fans. I would think police like him. Some people say not. I think fire guys would like him. I would think teachers. He's that's kind of his base. Rom's white. Gary's white. They've got sort of a white base. Although people say Rom's base is a little bit of everything. Gary's might be a little bit of everything, but a little bit more of the northwest side, one would think. But we'll let Gary tell you when he comes here. We so appreciate that he's willing to come here. Um, so I put him number two now, Mr. McCarthy. Lori Lightfoot, who's new to the race relatively, 55, African-American, which is important, race matters. As I count now, it looks like six blacks in the race, six African-Americans, four whites, uh, one maybe coming up Hispanic who hasn't declared yet. So Lori Lightfoot is a former federal prosecutor. Some would say she's a corporate type. She went to the University of Chicago Law School. She came out, she becomes a prosecutor. She's close aligned with civic stuff that's going on. She's appointed by Rahm to the Chicago Police Board. Um, okay, so um, she's a player in the city. And uh, she's smart. She understands public policy. She can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <clears throat> See, Rahm's articulate. He's well-spoken, not, not your natural politician type like a Barack Obama or Bill Clinton, but he can talk policy. He understands this. We imagine Gary McCarthy does. We haven't spoken a lot with Gary, but we'll see. We imagine Larry Lightfoot does. This is one thing that makes them players. If you want to be part of this, the establishment thinks you got to know the policies, you got to know the issues, you got to be articulate. Of course, along comes Trump, and he becomes president. Has that changed everything? Is there a Trump type in the mayor's race? I digress. Lori is also lesbian. She would be the first African American female elected mayor if she were elected here in Chicago. The first uh, lesbian, or somebody from the LGBT community. Um, she, uh, you know, all of the folks would want to view themselves as progressive. It seems like everybody thinks that's the great majority in Chicago, and maybe it is. Certainly majority Democrat. They're maybe best 15 to 20 percent Republicans. But some of the progressives don't think she's progressive enough. Recently it came out that she opposed Medicare. Some people push Medicare for all. She doesn't think that's such a good idea. Medicare may not be, as she says, the great program people think it is. She opposed single payer, so did Barack Obama. She opposes closing ICE, which some people think is somewhat drastic. But she has said she was hassled on the gang member list. There's a list of gang members in Chicago. People think people are put on there, they're hurt for life and so forth. We shouldn't really have that. We shouldn't really use it. Others say the gang member list tells you who's committing most of the really more violent, more harmful crimes, if you can focus on some, that some way, legally, without harassing these people, maybe you can stop crime. Well, she became persuaded by the critics that that shouldn't be using that gang member list. So I guess that makes her a little more progressive. So we've asked Lori to be on the show, and she said, you know, she's, she's pretty busy. So... We would hope she'll find time to do the show. We've had five of the candidates. We'll get to them soon. Uh, five of the candidates who are running for mayor are on the show. Willie Wilson, one of them, and he's been on twice. They're all for a moratorium on charter schools, which some would say is provides competition, provides an outlet for many, would say, the failing Chicago public schools. But if you're a progressive, you're against charter schools, or you certainly want a moratorium. You are all, they're all apparently for an elected school board. Gary would say a partially elected school board because as he says, if I'm going to be held accountable as mayor, I want to have a voice in that, which I think makes some sense. But they all want that. 
Nobody talks about when Chicago did have an elected school board prior to 95. I don't think it was working so well, but it's viewed by the progressives as the nirvana. See, a lot of people thought in 95 they gave the mayor, which was then Mayor Daley, a lot of control over CPS. They said, give him control, and then if he has control and it doesn't work, well, then we have somebody to be held accountable. And if it does work, well, that's an incentive to make it work. That was the thinking at that time. Has it? Has it done that? I don't know. Which takes us to Paul Vallis. Because Paul was the first CPS superintendent in 2001. He is our fourth candidate on our list running for mayor. He is 64. He was the superintendent of CPS from Chicago Public Schools from 95 to 2001. He had roots with Daly. His, um, you know, Paul's kind of a wonky guy. He was very oriented toward public policy. He initially was like budget director or something on budget, revenue director for Mayor Daley uh, before he was CPS CEO. He started charters. He now seems to be walking away from them, but he did start them. Points out there was a small number of them when he left. But according to him, CPS, after six years of Paul Vallis, was in great shape. Financially, it was in good shape. He had built in a lot of new schools. Things were much safer. People were doing well on test scores. This is Paul. Paul's been on once. We, you, gotta, you can find all this on youtube.com slash publicaffairstv. So you can find Paul's show. You can see him talking about CPS. You can reach your own conclusions. And then we come to Willie Wilson. Willie, sort of in the top five, he is an outlier. He doesn't fit these career paths of these other four. He, seventh grade education, Lori Lightfoot, University of Chicago Law School. Paul, I think, has a master's degree. Rom has a master's degree, I believe, and well, after undergraduate major, I think, in dance at Sarah Lawrence, I think he got a master's in communications at Northwestern. Um, Gary McCarthy's got a college degree from CUNY. So Willie Wilson, seventh grade education. African-American, but self-made guy, multimillionaire. Rose from nothing when he came to Chicago, five McDonald's, owned five McDonald's, owns a $60 million cleaning supplies company, says you can run, he knows how to run Chicago. Nobody else does. He's run a business, he's made money. He's worked, he's given hundreds of thousands of people's jobs, he says, through his medical supplies or cleaning supplies company, through the, his McDonald's. Uh, he knows how to work with people, blacks, Hispanics, whites, Asians. He's got an international business. That's his selling point. And you can watch Willie twice on public affairs, youtube.com slash public affairs TV. So the other candidates, um, might have a name recognition issue. Not Dorothy Brown. She's number six. She's running for, she's 69. She's running, she's now Circuit Court of, Circuit Court of Cook County Clerk. She's been in that position for four terms, four and a half terms. The, she seems to be dogged by an investigation of some kind of bribery or selling jobs or doing something wrong. She's never been formally accused. Some people around her have been charged. There's lots of whispers. Will something come out with that? Well, if something, if she were indicted, obviously that would, uh, that would uh, put a stop to her campaign, one would think. Although people sometimes get indicted and still go ahead and win things like Alderman in Chicago. We're probably not mayor, I don't think. Um, Troy LaRavier was a, was a teacher, principal, got into fracas with uh, Rahm and others, and uh, was fired for allegedly politicking while on the job. We won't go into all that. You can find more about Troy. Watch him on youtube.com slash public affairs TV. He is now head of the Principals and Administrators Association, 47, articulate, well-spoken black. Um, interesting stories. But, you know, Brown will have some issue. She has a name recognition, but can she be a player with that top group? Can she raise funds on that level? Can Troy do that? Boy, it's really doubtful. Okay, maybe they'll surprise, surprise me. But it's hard to be a major player 
running for city of Chicago mayor unless you can either strike a very responsive chord, a lot of name recognition known around the city, be somebody like a Lori Lightfoot or a Paul Vallis or a Gary McCarthy or even a Willie Wilson now. Okay, and maybe those folks can raise a half a million. Well, Lori's already raised a half a million. Maybe she could raise two million, three million, five million. If so, that may be enough to go up against Rom's 30 million. There are a few other candidates, Neil Salas Griffin. You can find him on youtube.com slash public affairs TV, a young high-tech entrepreneur. And a few others we're not gonna even go into at this point. And some of you would think an Hispanic can enter the race, right? There's a major base, no Hispanics, you know. Six African Americans, some really well known, like Lori Lightfoot, fairly well known, Willie Wilson, Dorothy Brown, others a little less well known. So that base is somewhat covered, and that and that may be too covered. They may drain from Lori Lightfoot, who may be the major one to run as an African American, or Willie Wilson. But if there's an Hispanic that comes in, you know, I mean, Ricky Munoz stepping down as alderman, he says he might run in four years. I don't know why people haven't asked him why he wouldn't run now. We tried to get Ricky on the show so we could ask him, but he hasn't, hasn't said yes yet. So, so that's kind of, you got a glimpse of the mayor's race. We spent a lot of time on Rom because this race, in a, in a sense, becomes a referendum on Rom. If the thumbs down on Rom, well, then they go and they pick either a McCarthy or a Lightfoot or a Vallis or a Wilson or one of the others. But if Rom can say thumbs up, despite Laquan McDonald, despite the CPS rapes, despite the spiking of violence in 20. 16 and then coming back down a little bit in 2017. And how does he do that? We'll skip the governor's race. We'll come back to that another time. Let's just take a minute or two and then we'll close. Um, so here's what you do if you're wrong. You got $30 million for campaigning, but you got, you got like about a $9, $10 billion budget if you count grants and all that for the city of Chicago. And you got a six, $7 billion budget. We haven't mentioned. CPS went up in the last year from almost like 20%, from 5.6 billion to 7 billion counting capital costs. There's a lot of money, a lot of contracts you can spread around. You can put early development centers here. You can do this with this school. Boy, you can hold an event every other day bringing money to the neighborhood. So put aside the 30 million you have to get pretty advertising. But, you know, when you can give money to people, Willie's well, been told his foundation couldn't pay the property taxes, because Willie, the Illinois Campaign for Political Reform, who we invited, should take a look at this. There's a way to give out money and buy votes legally, unless the IC, Illinois Campaign for Political Reform, can find in his contributions to Mr. Emanuel, Mayor Emanuel, a tie to favors that were handed out to people, business favors, well then it becomes illegal. So, okay, giving you some opinion, some analysis, you know a lot about the mayor's race, and you come back next week and every week to public affairs, I hope not to see maybe, you know, Berkowitz, this is interesting ideas and analysis, but you really want to see the candidates we want the state legislative candidates here. We want the gubernatorial candidates here. We want all the mayoral candidates. Lori Lightfoot, we want you. Gary McCarthy, we're going to have you. Ron Emanuel, you come back ex next week and every week to public affairs.